Hello, everyone. I can't believe I just did that. So it says Alex Zahara, but it is Rachel Luttrell who is joining us. That is the first time in 85 episodes, 86 episodes that has happened. Welcome to 86, episode 86 of Dial the Gate. My name is David Reed. Rachel Luttrell is uh, joining us in this episode. But before I bring her in, I just want to invite you to share the show. If you like Stargate and you want to see more content like this on YouTube, it would mean a great deal to me if you click that like button. It really makes a difference with YouTube's algorithm and will definitely help the show grow its audience. Please also consider sharing this video with a Stargate friend. And if you want to get notified about future episodes, click that subscribe icon. And giving the bell icon a click will notify you the moment a new video drops and you'll get my notifications of any last minute guest changes. This is key if you plan on watching live. And clips from this live stream will be released over the course of the next several days on both the Dial the Gate and GateWorld.net YouTube channels. As with most live streams, I invite you to go to dial uh, youtube.com slash dial the gate and submit your questions for the guests uh, to the moderating team. They will go ahead and get those uh, routed over to me. And that's uh, that's how we'll do it. Now, hailing all the way from her kitchen in the Pegasus Galaxy, Rachel Luttrell. Hello. <laughs> Hello. 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 I know this is hilarious. This is, this hilarious. is fantastic. Cooking with Taylor. Uh, cooking with Taylor, guys. I um, promised my sweet little daughter, Ridley, that I would make her noodles. But sh should I just let everybody know what the heck happened? And, Please. And no, it's I, fine. Yeah. I've already started the show saying that Alex Zahara is joining us in the title <laughs> sequence. So you know what? You be my guest. Okay, so everybody, I have signed in to talk to David now twice today. The first time was at 6 a.m. David's time. I thought that, yeah, I don't know, I don't know what I was thinking. I was like, yeah, that makes sense, because that's, you know, my time. I was exhausted. I had a cup of coffee. I was all ready to go. Everything was perfectly lit. And then I realized my mistake, and then I signed in again at noon my time. Oh, my gosh. Once again, perfect. I had all the kids. I was like, kids, you know. Right? So now it's the actual interview time. <laughs> and I'm cooking because it's just like, it's perfect. So, you know, I mean, this is, that's just how the day's going. But I also want to, okay, so let me share this with you. I have a fantastic son who I absolutely adore. And the reason why I'm sleep deprived and not calculating things is because I've been on this great adventure with him. He's a gamer and he's oh. been, yeah, and he's been playing Resident Evil 8. Oh my god. I hate horror <laughs> or scary things of any kind. And Caden has his entire life loved scaring me. He will come into the kitchen while I'm like quietly doing it and he'll sneak in and then just say, "Mom," and I'll be like, Stop! So anyway, I have been invited by my sweet little guy to go through the stories and watch him play, and he's amazing at it. So anyway, I've been staying very up, very, very late watching Resident Evil. We made it through eight. He was amazing. The monsters scared me out of my skin. <laughs> and now we are revisiting seven, which is even more terrifying. <laughs> So I didn't get to bed until 1 a.m. Oh, my um, gosh. With visions of like, oh, my gosh, they're horrific. I don't know if you know anything about it. but I'm aware of it. You know, I am a gamer as well. So I'd love to compare notes with him on some of the things that he's played. Oh, but, sure. Um, the, uh, the, the It's intense, you know, and a lot of this stuff. I mean, good on you for being willing to expose yourself to it. I have a mother that my dad and I um, swore that, I mean, she can never see things like Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> Sorry, say that again. My no, it's fine. She can never see things like Silence of the Lambs or oh, um, you know, okay, anything yeah, of that nature because, you know, she will never sleep again. So there are just certain things that we have to keep her away from. And you know, good on you for, for being willing to uh, explore your, your, son's, uh, your son's passions. Oh, oh so. heck yeah. Heck yeah. So let me just, okay, so uh, that's Lloyd in the background. <laughs> Hello. This is like family life. Um, now, listen to me. First of all, yeah, I, I know that it's, I 
think it's pretty rare for a 13 year old to be, you know, willing to share. And so whenever he says he wants, I'm on it. I'm like 100% yes. Good for you. Scare me to death. But I'm actually really enjoying it. Like it's it's actually I. It's a good story. I, I don't know that much about it, but what I've heard, oh, I, really I know a lot of people who love it. Story. Yeah, it's awesome. Absolutely. And I'm not Resident Evil. Okay, Caden, uh, do you mind taking this to Ridley? Yes, Thank you so much. Hello, sir. <laughs> so uh, I'm done cooking, and I can now leave the kitchen <laughs> and uh, go to where I've been set up for the past several hours. What is that? Avocados. Oh, hello. Got to got to have your avocados. They're really good for you. Okay. Okay, guys, sorry. I'm like <laughs> We are we are getting the the full life of the Batemans. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to go where I originally was okay. I'm being blocked by um <laughs> set up three times. Here we go. This is where you were meant to find me. All oh, polished. I right. love it. It's very nice, Rachel. Only not polished because it's kind of chaos back here too. That's okay. So who's the photographer in the house? Uh, Lloyd. Lloyd is the photographer. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, um, he has a lovely family to photograph. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So you, the reason that you have been um, up all night long and everything uh -huh. else, uh -huh. thankfully not, I mean... I am a, a like a sidebar result of this, but what's been going on in your guys' lives that's happening oh. real soon here? Yeah, yeah. So Ridley, Ridley is, well, she's no longer a burgeoning actress. She's an amazing young actress um, who is blowing my mind. We have been back in Georgia here where we currently live yeah. for about um, three and a half weeks. Okay. But we are back from Montana where she was filming her very first feature film with John wow. Malkovich. Wow. Yeah. And um, John Mal Malkovich and, and Frank Grillo. And um, she uh, kills. Oh, I shouldn't say anything. Anyway, I'm not going to give any. She kills wet, a bug. She kills a bug. She kills a bug. Montana is now safe. <laughs> anyway, that was her very first feature, and we all got to go. And and uh, and while we were there, um, I helped her with another audition, and she she booked another huge feature film. <laughs> I, I, an enormous part on a huge feature film with Alice and Janie and uh, oh, Journey nice. Smollett and um, um, Logan Marshall Green. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so, and and Ridley. There are four of them. That's it. So um, we're flying up to Vancouver in two days. All of us are going up. Um, and she's about to embark on this other en enormous, I mean, she's blowing my mind. You know, both my babies blow my mind, you know. Wow. <laughs> Are you ready for all this? Are you ready for her to her career to just explode and then you be chasing after her everywhere she goes? That's a big that's a big responsibility, Rachel. Yeah. That's a big yeah. Deal. It is. You know, it's for someone so young and then with school and everything, especially mm -hmm. right now, you know, with yeah. everything just off kilter as it is, you know, know. let alone the, the normal mm -hmm. world. Right. Um, I know. It's huge. It's really huge. Um, but it's I mean, to me it's it's a joy, you know? Yeah. I like, uh, I, as I said, I love sitting with my son in the, in the dark, <laughs> terrifying things because he adores it. And I'm like, okay, great. Yeah. I'm ready to be scared to death because you're amazing at this. And I think you're amazing. And wherever you go is going to be amazing. And Ridley, yeah, it's just, it's amazing to be with her on set. Yeah. The just, you know, Montana was, was fantastic. Yeah. And she was I mean, she 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 was blowing my mind. She's a really wonderful little actress, um, and and uh, very independent. Hurt my hurt mama's feelings a couple times because I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> I was it's like, like you don't need me for nothing. Exactly. Pretend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, um, can I help you with your jacket, or or do you want to run lines? And she's like, Mom, I got this. Um, oh. She's only eight. She's eight. Yeah, but it's I'm I'm very excited and she's very excited and the team is awesome and it's going to be and yeah, so to answer your question, yes, I'm ready. There's um 
something that my parents used to say that was handed down from from my grandparents on my mom's side from Tanzania. Mm. And it's that your children are ahead of you. You know, you just mm. you, they, they come after you, but they're ahead of you in terms of the fact that they're, they will lead you to places that you you know, that, that, that maybe you've never experienced or wouldn't have thought. Even or, considered. So, even considered precisely, yeah. precisely that they're ahead of you and, um, and that they will take you places, you know, throughout your life that are amazing and unexpected. So I'm, I'm signed up for the journey. <laughs> Sounds like you're blessed. I am blessed. Yeah, I really am. I'm really blessed. Yeah, I'm a lucky mama. And I am blessed to have you back once again on my show. <laughs> bringing your uh. light in um there there are some um announcements that are going to be coming hopefully that i can announce real soon but uh, rachel and i and a few others have something in the works for y'all um but uh yeah we're just we're just waiting on clearance for that but in the meantime i i want you to take me back to that five-year journey in the pegasus galaxy um oh, yeah. far far away uh no kidding you know, far it- far away <laughs> Do you in Georgia? Do you uh, do you get recognized for Taylor ever? Hey, on occasion, because Atlanta is becoming a pretty big burgeoning um, film community. Yes. Oh, it's a huge film community here now, but it it really takes me by surprise here because you know for the most part I am you know just putzing around as as a mama, mm-hmm. uh, but every once in a while, every once in a while, and it will really take me <laughs> by surprise, like. Um, you know, my son likes Chick Fil A, and you know, Georgia, <laughs> like, and where we are right now, Peachtree City is like the center of like you know. I think this is this is this is actually where he started everything. Yeah. Um. So uh, yeah, we were in a, a lineup to get uh, Chick Fil A, and there was this adorable teenager, and she was like, "Can I have a name for the order?" And I said, "Yeah, it's Rachel." And she was like, oh, "Okay, <laughs> are you?" And I thought, "Oh no way! Are you kidding me? I'm in the Chick Fil A line." Um, That's where these things happen. So stuff like that, or like a, a farmer's market, you know, um, buying some, you know, local produce and then, but it's delightful. It's delightful. Stuff like that, you know, every once in a while I'm peppered with little things like that and it's great. And my kids are like, why do they care about you? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, what the hell? Can it's- we, just- I, mom, I want the number one sandwich without right. the pickles. <laughs> <laughs> the Chick-fil-A sauce is where it's at. <laughs> Please move on. Yeah. They're always like, what is just what's you, happening? You know what, kids? If you're lucky enough to get a a series that has a dedicated fan base to it, yeah. you will then understand, you know. Yeah. Because yeah. your mama is loved the world over. Uh, as exemplified by the art that I will show at the end of this episode. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> Which I said to you. I know, and I love it. I love it. The so, talent yeah. of this community is just ridiculous. No. You know, not only are are so many um, uh, new new people, young and old, rediscovering the show as we move yeah. forward in time. You know, with streaming and everything else, but they, it is encouraging them to explore facets of themselves that they didn't necessarily think that they could reach before. And I'm, um, and I'm, um, oh. I'm borrowing from a quote that you gave about a year ago when we had a gate con reunion. Mm. Um, you, it's something that has always stuck with me. You said, you know, it encouraged people to, to grasp farther than they thought they could reach. This uh-huh. was one of the things that you said, and you know, that's what good art does. You know, when it gets into our soul and kind of sticks with us, you know, it's something that we can't shake away. It's one of those things that um, help us fall in love with the world and aspects of our and discover aspects of ourselves that we didn't necessarily know that we had. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm just. So just so people don't think there's a poltergeist in the corner of my screen. Who is that? That's Ridley. Um, <laughs> there's like little hands coming through. She may she may decide to come and say hello, but I'm gonna. Look. <laughs> she's grabbing something. Oh That's my funny. gosh! Okay, she's got a, a she's got a um, what is it like a hair mask on? So I'm, <laughs> oh, it's a conditioner. She said, "Okay, all right. Listen, she's you know she's got to get ready for close ups." Um, Yes, yes. The, this community is is amazing, and I'm I am constantly humbled. 
um, by the outpouring of, gosh, just, you know, all of the wonderful things that I hear, how lives have been transformed, um, how they've enjoyed the show, how they've responded to, to my character and the other characters. It's, it's always so awe-inspiring. Um, and humbling. Mm. So I'm I'm so fortunate. I'm so fortunate to be a part of this family. Um, I, I really am. I had no idea, you know, when this all started. I had no idea um, how amazing this this was and was going to continue to be. And so I, I count myself um, among some very very lucky people. I meant to ask you the first time that we talked on the show. Did you ever take <laughs> Amanda Tapping aside, or did she ever offer you know? Come to me if any of this seems crazy. I can, you know, I can at least be a sounding board. <laughs> uh, I, um, yes, yes. Amanda, first of all, did say that. She was always very open and um, welcoming. Um, I used her strength and her wisdom when I was pregnant with Caden. Okay. Um, yeah, just before I, I went and I told the team that, hey, guess what? This season, I'm going to be pregnant. Um, I went to her first because I, I know that she had gone through a pregnancy, um, and uh, she was she was wonderful. She was delightful. She um, gave me some great, you know, just 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 a wonderful pep talk and and encouragement. And she actually showed up on the day that I uh, went to tell everybody. She was there for me, and afterwards oh. she was like, "How did it go?" Um, and she was delightful through the whole process. And actually, because I at the time had, you know, I'd moved from Los Angeles to work up there. Yeah. She actually gave me her her um, OBGYN <laughs> who ended up delivering Caden. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. So yes, so Amanda was and is a delightful human being and was very supportive. Yeah. The um, the show had uh, such an impact on all of us as viewers the the direction that it that it took us was kind of i did not expect rachel to have Taylor be carrying the um the 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 blood of the enemy inside of her oh, later wow. on in the at the end of season one because she's a little different from all the other athosians she's a little bit more perceptive and everything else and it's just one of those things i mean athos it's a matriarchal society you know so they're gonna they're gonna um your leaders are your leaders but then when uh, we discover that she had wraith in her mm -hmm. that she had she had um there, there was more going on than met the eye yeah, what did, what yeah. did you think about that story turn? Oh, I absolutely loved it. I mean, that's one of my very, very favorite episodes um, for talking about the gift. The gift, yes. Yeah, yeah. It's one of my very favorite episodes. Um, it, you know, it just gave a little bit more insight into who she was and why she was. Um, and, um, you know, the inner workings of her emotional world and, and how she struggled much with the fact that she was different and also that she had elements of of uh you know the arch enemy um all of that was was wonderful um I, I loved how that just kind of elevated her story and who she you know who she was I also very much enjoyed working on that show because um uh they introduced the character of Dr. Heitmeyer Claire Rankin yeah who is one of my dearest friends on the uh. planet She's one of my dearest friends on the planet. If there's something going on in my world that's, you know, that's got me down, she's certainly one of the people who I call. So it was amazing that she turned out to be my therapist. So all of those, <laughs> scenes, yeah, all of those scenes where I'm like pouring, you know, it was terrific because she's she she had been that person for years before we lived together. Oh in wow! Our, okay. Oh yeah, we lived together in our twenties when we first moved to Los Angeles. We. We ran lines with each other. We, you know, we just, yeah. So that, that was, so that's another reason why that episode is near and dear to my heart. But yeah, um, I think that it just expanded who Taylor was and um, set her, set her apart and also got, got, you know, me as well as the audience an opportunity to see something different from her, right. um, which was great. You know, right. we know that she can fight, you know, we know that she can lead. <laughs> But it's yeah. also there's also nothing wrong with seeing that that people are vulnerable. 
too. The, oh, absolutely. In fact, I think that that just makes a character all the more powerful because you see what they're trying to suppress in order to be strong. Um, yeah, yeah. I, absolutely. It, <laughs> what are some of your favorite guest stars over the course of that show? Who would you, um, Boy. who were you surprised that you guys got? And who did you wish you could have worked with more? Oh, interesting. Um, I was, who was I surprised that we got? I mean, we got so many amazing people. Mm -hmm. I think that Richard Kind, because that man works constantly on everything. <laughs> right. I mean, he is like, talk about a working actor. He's in like everything, like blockbusters. To, so yes, yeah, so, so when I found out that we had Richard Kind, that was really, really, really fun. Um, who would I have liked to have worked with more? Um, goodness. I feel like, I feel like I was lucky enough with all of the guest stars that joined us that, you know, I, I, I got, I got to work with, I got to work with the majority of them. And, um, yeah, yeah. Richard Kind though was, was, uh, one of the more surprising ones for me, certainly. Um, and, uh, gosh, I'm okay. So let me just get, uh, tell you something about myself. I could never be a name dropper because I'm horrendous with names. So I'm trying to, I really am. It's just terrible. It's one of the things that my friends know about me and they think it's really, really funny. It's like, Rachel, so who did you work with in that? And I'm like, um, she was in this, this, and this. And like, <laughs> right. I can't think of the name. It's there, oh but yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I'm trying to think of this wonderful Irish actor's name. Call him. <sighs> ah, call Meanie. Thank you. Thank you. So yes, he was another one who I was uh, surprised and, and thrilled to be able to work with because, you know, uh, amazing actor. There's so many. And so right now I feel like I'm doing an acceptance speech and I'm forgetting absolutely everyone. <laughs> it's really amazing. Gosh, it's like, I can't remember. Their, it's terrible. I'm terrible at it. I should have written it all down. But um, no, you're fine. I, I didn't. Say. I didn't prepare you for this question, so that's not <laughs> that's fair okay. to you. It's fine. You caught me making noodles. It's all good. It's, <laughs> it's one of those days. It's a noodly day. But I will say that um, I was very impressed by the caliber of our guest stars. Um, they were they were wonderful, and they're all, and they're all actors who've gone on to do amazing things, and who came to us already with terrific body of work. Um, yeah, so oftentimes it was quite a humbling experience for sure. What about Connor? Spent a lot of time uh, with Connor. I did. I spent a ton of time with Connor, and I love Connor. Uh, I think that he is a terrific actor. Um, when we got to meet Connor, um, you know, for the first time, mm. I, I was so thrilled to be able to work with him. You know, it's like sometimes, um, you have, a, an immediate rapport with, with an actor and, and it's, it's, it's so fun because, you know, you can, you're discovering things as you go and, and, um, I don't know, it was just, it was just that way with Connor, um, the scenes felt really alive. Like they're, they're, it felt like there was a lot, you know, even in the silences. Um, mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, and that carried through, through the rest of, you know, the, the seasons. That was a relationship that you see working immediately on the screen in Michael. Yeah. And uh, it was like, you know, if, if they really want to mine this, they mm. can, and they did throughout the rest of the show, all the way to his yeah. death. Yeah. Um, there was there was a lot there, and I think um, uh, I I, th I think that they could have even gone further with it. I think that they could have almost like made him a regular and made it work because I mean it sure. was there was a there was almost a a, a a single note that he played. Not that not that it was yeah. like a limiting range in terms of of what came out, but. Um, we had set this thing loose on the Pegasus Galaxy, mm -hmm. and he had, uh, I mean, destroyed how many civilizations? Mm -hmm. And at a certain point, it's like, okay, how responsible are we for doing what we have done? That's yeah. the question that Mike, the episode asks. What mm -hmm. right do you have to mm -hmm. alter a a single being, even if it's a member of your arch enemy's race? And then, mm -hmm. what are the consequences of doing that? on the rest of the galaxy. Exactly. You know? exactly. Which it's I pretty feel intense like stuff. It is intense stuff. It is intense stuff. And and uh, I think that they dealt with it, you know, in a, in a wonderful way. And certainly that episode um, was, was um, you know, full of those questions. 
But I feel that that was something that, you know, was like a through line that carried through all of the seasons. Yeah, you know, what right do we have? And, um, you know, and then and then do we have any right to be, a, uh, not, not necessarily upset, it's not the word I'm looking for, yes. but surprised by the repercussions, um, which were, of course, massive. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and I do agree with you. I think Connor certainly could have been a character who we saw a lot more of, um, you know, and, and yeah, and, and could have portrayed so many different levels that we didn't get an opportunity to see. You know, that's one of the things that happens in a show that's an ensemble show. You're just mm-hmm. serving so many characters. Correct. And There's only so much bandwidth. Right. Yeah, but... Um, As you yeah. and I have discussed to our, to our mutual... Uh, you know, <laughs> to be perfectly frank. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, it's. Um, I will say this, just you know, um, just to be completely uh, transparent. There, are, and I haven't really revisited, you know, many of the shows for for years. So for me, it's like you know, just kind of relying on the my memory and the mm. fondness of yeah, and of course. There are there are things that I will never forget, etc. But um, uh, on that note, and I and I don't mean to jump ahead because I think that maybe you're going to ask me about this, but I will just say this, just a little peppering. We were going to talk about the final episode, ah. um, which I had never watched. Oh. I had just never watched. I just never watched. So I um, I watched it this morning after I realized that you and I were not meeting at six a.m. <laughs> oh, jeez. I thought, well, you know, I might as well, yeah, I might as well watch watch this episode for the first time. What'd you think? And I, um, and I, uh, it uh-huh. was. <laughs> it's a mixed bag. It's a mixed bag. It's a mixed bag. And there, yeah, there, there are moments I thought, gosh, you know, wait, hang on a second. Taylor would never leave Ronan. I wouldn't have left his body lying there prostrate, you know, on the way. I was just stuff like that. And also I had forgotten, you know, I mean, I, I, I didn't really do a heck of a lot in, in, in that last episode. I remember there was, which is interesting because when I play it back in my mind before watching it, I, I, I had a hard time remembering. I thought, gosh, you know, I had a hard time remembering it. Atlantis's nature was fast paced. And yes. this, I, I enjoy Enemy at the Gate very much. I want to clarify. Absolutely. Yeah. But uh, it, it was almost two or three times as fast as a typical episode because okay. it had a lot going on in it. And oh so there was only so much time for little character beats, which is which is what we watch the show for, at least yeah. the people that I surround myself with. So, yeah. you know, that's... <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's not... Yeah. I mean, it wasn't supposed to be a series finale, even though it was. I mean, and mm-hmm. it's... So, A, you have the nature of the story as it is, and and B, you know, it also functions as this is it, you know, and the 100th episode. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And period. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, I want to go back a little bit further. Oh, I did, I did mean to ask this to you. Is it your intent at some point to sit down and watch the show from beginning to end? Or do you want it oh. to stay in, do you want it to stay in your memory? I, I mean, the truth of the matter is I haven't really made a decision about that. Okay. I, 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 you know, I, I actually really enjoyed revisiting Enemy at the Gate. I did. Mm-hmm. And it was really, so... So I, I mean, I, I think I would enjoy it at some point. Um, I find it a little bit tricky to just sit and watch. I don't know my performances. Although it's very fun to get to see everybody else, and you know, and just think, God, look at us, look at us. Right. Um, and then remember moments about you know what we were doing behind the scenes, etc. So yeah, eventually, eventually, I'll, I'll go back and watch them. I have to share a, a a moment with you. Um, it's it's interesting. I don't my when I it was one of the, I think it may have been the first time. Yeah, it was the first time. No, it was the second year that I was on set. Anyway, um, I didn't know that you weren't supposed to do this. So you guys were filming Irresistible, oh. 
Oh, yeah. Speaking of Richard. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, you're, and you're on the uh, the village soundstage. OK. And you're not shooting, but um, you guys were were rehearsing or something or, or getting ready. And okay. you and I made eye contact. Oh, OK. And I, and I smiled at you and you smiled back. And it wasn't <laughs> five minutes later where Carol Appleby, the publicist, took me aside and said, don't do that. <laughs> really? Yeah. She was very observant. Wow. <laughs> okay, so let me just tell you that that didn't come from me. <laughs> you know, I smiled at you and then said, who the F is that? <laughs> Remove him. <laughs> I had no idea, really. Yeah. Oh, no. No, no, I, did, no, I didn't. And I, I didn't even consider that it came from you because you didn't have the chance. You were over there, you know. So unless you two are telepathic, you know. But it was, yeah, it yeah. was funny in that it was like I was learning the rhythms of of the stage and you know sure. what it is that you can and can't do and anything else. But huh. you know, it was it was. So, just but funny. Wait, wait, what was the note for you that you can't maintain eye contact don't, with the don't, cast? Don't make eye contact with the cast when they're when they're working. Oh, when they're oh yeah. Well, I mean, okay. So listen. There's a difference between being on set and just, you know, between scenes and then when you're actually rolling. Yeah, it was, uh, it, you were getting ready to roll. Oh, So you were okay. finding your space and it was my <laughs> fault, you know, so. You threw me. So if the performance in that episode is all off for Taylor, we know who to blame. Thank you, David. <laughs> yeah, sorry, that's my fault. Oh, jeez, that's great. Oh, man. <laughs> How funny. Jewel I, State and, yeah. and you had a romp in the woods when the Athosians <laughs> go missing in, conveniently enough, missing. Um, yeah. I love this episode because <laughs> it gets us out of the typical sound stages. It shows us Vancouver in all its glory. You know, the the bridge that was built for that, uh, for that episode. Mm -hmm. Your wardrobe is great for that. And you get to play with uh, James uh, C.D. Robbins's very, very disgusting gopher slug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was great. That was hilarious. What a delicious yes. Yeah, we had, um, yeah, Jewel and I had so much fun. Like, we didn't really get a lot of, you know, opportunities to, to play together. The, yeah. And, and she, she was another actress who I very much enjoyed working with. And she's she's got a, an awesome sense of humor. And, um, you know, it's slightly off like mine. Um, and we had we had a lot of fun. We just I just remember that episode laughing laughing a lot. Um, and uh, also that episode I happened to, to be pregnant in. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So there was there was kind of a lot going on. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, working working with Jewel was was really really funny. And um, yeah, I just I just have memories of us having a lot of fun and laughing a great deal <laughs> which is which is funny considering that the episode itself was not necessarily a funny episode right but it was it was i think really cool to see you know those two women playing off and how off of each other uh and how different our characters were but but how we were able to come together and help each other um another one of my favorites for sure yeah i loved the note that um Jewel struck on the show because mm -hmm. Ter Terrell Rothery, you know, uh, uh, Paul, you know, we, we have had uh, uh, a great cast of Stargate doctors over the years. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. she like, like Lexa Doig when, when, she, when Lexa came in for, for a few sure. episodes as well, Jewel yeah. chose to, to deliberately uh, give um, Keller a little bit of a harder edge, not so softy, smushy, you know, uh, <laughs> cuddly like like Paul right. was, you know, because right. Paul just ex Paul just exudes that empathy. Um, but yeah. Rachel, uh, but Rachel, uh, Jewel came in and gave it a little bit more of a of an edge to her. Yeah. And then you put her out in this situation where it's like, OK, this 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 girl is not ready for this situation. It was so it was so funny to watch yeah. someone deal with this because it's like, OK, all of us watching pretty much all of us here would be in Jewel's situation as well. <laughs> right. Completely out of her element. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. she's great. Um, I um, you know, as I said, I just watched Enemy at the Gate for the very first time. And, and uh, yeah, they, we don't get to see a lot of Jewel in that yeah. one. But but when we do. 
it's it's all of that. It's what you said, you know, where she's being informed that, you know, we're going to uh, we're going to get ourselves to earth and uh, it might fail. Mm -hmm. And if it does fail, then we're all dead. And if it doesn't <laughs> fail, we'll be prepared to fight. And uh, and the way she delivered that line was just so wonderful. I was just like, um, OK. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what are you, you going to say? What are you going to say? But the way she delivered it was just perfect. Um, and exactly, you know, all the things that you say about Jewel, uh, her performance in that particular role, because obviously she's played many roles. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. your, uh, your, your time under prosthetics in Atlantis, mm -hmm. it's interesting because you have one shot in season one where you are a full-blown wraith. Mm -hmm. And then you spend an episode in season five, the wonderful yeah. episode, The Queen, uh, as a wraith once once again. Mm -hmm. What was it like getting into that character, getting underneath those prosthetics in season one when the wraith makeup was still evolving mm -hmm. to where it was uh, in season five, you know, after Andy and... You know, all the others had, James had really, you know, found, perfected, you know, yeah. perfected the process with, with, mm -hmm. with the artists that were behind the scenes there. Right, right, exactly. Um, very different. Both of them, the experiences were, were very, very different. Um, you know, I was new to prosthetics, obviously, in season one. Um, I'd never done than before had them put on so so that was a unique experience in and of itself it it takes forever to you know to have it put on and um you know luckily i'm not claustrophobic so it yeah. was fine but it was just um it was a, it was a different <sighs> juxtaposed with the queen that er, those early experiences were completely different the queen for me um, first of all, I was kind of resistant to the idea. I was very resistant. Really? I didn't. Well, and this is why I was on a personal level because okay. I, I was a new mom. Yeah. And I, I, I was a new mom. Um, when, when I, when I heard that that was something that they were talking about, I was like, I'm sorry, what? Uh, because yeah, because my infant was in the trailer with me. Um, and I didn't know how that was going to go down. Right. Uh, just seeing yeah. you looking the way that you were was that was that the concern, or was it just totally. the time to take to get into the to the whole I mean, shebang? Both, both, but the but the the one that weighed on me the most was the was how I was going to look, and you know how that would affect him. Yeah, you look like a monster. Like a For monster. God's sake! <laughs> Let me just maybe, say, maybe that's where the Resident Evil thing comes from. I was just about to say yes. But I should have known because when he saw me as an infant in full on monster makeup, his response was to laugh. He laughed and laughed. He thought it was just like, what are you doing? That's hilarious. Which is why, I mean, now he just, he, he loves watching that kind of like horror stuff. It's like, it doesn't bother him. It's just yeah. part of, anyway. Yeah, no, um, that has but, a lot to do with it. You know that per those personality yeah. traits just stick with you. So yeah, they stick with you. But um, but I yes, as I said, I was resistant to the idea of it. But once I was in full makeup and wardrobe and was portraying her, mm -hmm. it was actually really really wonderful because um, she sat in a different place from me, obviously completely than Taylor. Um, it felt really. I mean, it felt really powerful. She regal. felt, oh, regal and powerful. And just, it was different, like entirely different from, you know, what I played. Obviously, Taylor was regal and powerful, but in a different way, it's in a different, different energy. way. Totally this is, different. This, is, this was pompous. <laughs> yeah, and that was fun to play. Yeah. That was really, really fun to play. And I didn't, I honestly didn't think I was going to enjoy it. I really didn't. Um, but I, I remember really, really enjoying it. I remember once everything was on and I and the wardrobe was on and and kudos to our you know wardrobe department. They were always just so amazing the stuff that they came up with, and that was no exception. Um, the the wardrobe for for that character was fantastic, and it transformed. It just made me feel completely different and 
And I and I ended up very much enjoying that episode. Yeah. When, when you have a chance to see, um, uh, to get the long view on some of these episodes, where you know, I'm I'm imagining weeks in advance, you're you're being asked, you know, will you be oh, willing yeah. to do this? Does <laughs> the mental position that you're allowed to put yourself in uh, help sustain you uh, for those for those longer days, rather than? You know, them saying, okay, we have a technical error. We're going to have to be here five hours longer. And then you have to drag yourself literally to bed at night. Um, with all the makeup and the lines oh, and everything sure. else, you yeah. you were, you were f- asked to bring yourself fully into that episode. Not that you weren't in others, but this is a big, this yeah. is a big deal. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, the time uh, requirement to get into that character is immense, as you said. And then obviously at the end of the day to get out of it. I remember um, showing up to set at around 3.30 in the morning um, to to have the, the makeup process begin. Um, it was a, was a huge commitment. And yes, it was exhausting. Um, but, you know, listen, it's it's part and parcel to, to you know, I'm an actor. I'm going to do all that I can to, to bring it to life. Um, but yeah, it was, it was certainly a, um, a taxing, a taxing, um, yeah, situation. Ah. Absolutely. You know, um, enemy at the gate, it, it came far too, if I'm remembering the episode correctly, is this is, this is, I believe, yeah, the one where, uh, Picardo as Woolsey has the scene, you know, we're, we're about to cross out of the Pegasus galaxy and there's exactly. a great scene between the, the three of you, you, Picardo and, and, and Jason, like, what do you want? What do you want to do? You know, you, there's, you want us to let you off at a Stargate here? Um, yeah. and they're like, no, no, we're, we're in this. We're in this yeah. for the long haul. I love yeah. that beat in the episode yeah. where it's like, it's accumulation of the 99 that have come before it. And it's sure. like, we're a part of this team. This is who we are. And mm-hmm. to the bitter end. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, um, I love what Ronan said that, you know, you guys have been here for us the whole time in a different galaxy. And so absolutely, we're in it and we're with you guys. And yeah, that was that was a fun moment for sure. Yeah. You were aware that that was the last episode when you were shooting it, right? Yes, we were. We were all aware. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, we, I, we all... Sorry. Please, continue. Oh, I was just going to say we were all um, under the impression and certainly had hoped that there would be um, some movies. Right. Um, so we didn't think that it was going to be the end to, you know, the storylines, but we knew that it was the end of of the season. And, uh, and that was a big deal. You know, as we progressed through that episode, um, you know, it's a it's a. It's a series wrap on yeah. on Paul, and then it was just like it was so emotional. It's like, oh my god, this is, you know, or it's a, this is a series wrap on Jason. It was huge. I remember, yeah, you know. So at all of us, as we walked into what we knew, okay, this is this is my last scene, yeah. and then we're done. Um, it was a very emotional episode that way for sure. Yeah. What happened on set when they would close those those scenes down? Where I mean, applause, you know. Um, what's what's the typical situation for for something like that? Well, I mean, you know, that was five years, and it was right. a family, and it was a family for all of us. I mean, you know, everyone, crew, um, you know, it, it, all of us. And so it was it was very emotional. So there was always like a, a large group of people from all the departments. Um, so there was a, a lot of clapping and then a lot of tears and then a lot of tears. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, we'd have to regroup and move on. And then somebody else would be wrapped forever. Um, it was it was it was very emotional for sure. Have um, your. um have have your memories of those five years um, mm. become, you know, more favorable over time, or are you like, oh, David wants to talk to me again about this show? Okay, fine, all right, I will. <laughs> no, not to favorable. say that it wasn't favorable then. That's not my not what I'm getting at. But I mean, like, yeah. is it is it matured like a like a nice wine? Fine wine, yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, I I now carry it in a different place in my heart, for sure. I yeah. mean, it's you know the final episode aired like twelve years ago, I know. and you that haven't aged a day, my friend. 
You should see the filters that I've got around me. <laughs> I mean, thank you, but it bu- bu- blows my mind. That was like 12 years ago. And, and um, you know, we were all in different places. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I, I do have a very nostalgic place for it. And I'm, a, a lot of a lot of really wonderful and loving feelings about that time for sure. It was a really really wonderful time. I remember, I remember uh, Joe Joe's wife at the time. Um, in that fir- in our very first season, we had a we had a party, and uh, you know we were all kind of overlooking the ocean. It was this wonderful party, and we were just about to embark on the adventure of our five seasons. And I remember she pulled me aside and she said, "I hope you're taking this all in." She said, "This is this is really special what you're about to do." And and I always remember that, and it's true. I'm actually getting a little choked up about it. I'm going to not cry, but it's true. It was very very special. Um, yeah. So, mm-hmm. how many oppor- how many times does an opportunity like this come for an actor? You know, to be a yeah. part of an ensemble for five years. It's pretty rare, is it not? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, listen, it's very listen. It's rare enough to be able to have a living as an actor, yeah. let alone. Um, having an opportunity to perform on a show that was so well received um it's all very rare i mean you're talking like you know top four percentile of yeah. and 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 amazingly talented there, there's some insanely talented actors out there who don't get that opportunity so it's it's very rare and um i'm very um uh, we're just watching a movie back there. So yeah, there's there's a fantastic opera singer in there somewhere. <laughs> I have a fantastic yeah. That's that's the orchestra for for my um. We had it uh, scored for this particular interview. <laughs> I actually feel like it was perfect. Like that. It was that, See, that that happened, particular what I was moment. Just, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's funny, Rachel. <laughs> a rare moment. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. And I do count myself. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm very lucky. I'm very lucky. You know, um, yeah, it's hard. This is a hard business to, mm. this is a hard business to, to you know, make a living in, um, let alone, as I said, being gifted with the opportunity to be part of something that was so beloved and that was also just a wonderful experience. And it was. I am interested to hear because obviously you're in contact with, I, I imagine, with with your colleagues, you know, mm-hmm. uh, globally. How this past year has impacted everyone's careers? Has it been hard on a lot of the people in in your industry that you know of? Have they weathered it better than you all expected? You know, I mean, yeah. just in general, I'm curious. Sure, sure. I mean, it's certainly been a crazy, crazy year. It feels like. It feels like three years kind of compounded into one. But, you know, it was it was great to see how quickly the the industry uh, figured out how to make it work um, and got itself back up and running um, with all of the, you know, the the testing protocols and, and you know, the the new protocols on set. Now, just so everybody knows, guys, now we're everybody's wearing a mask with the exception of actors. Everybody has to get tested three times a week. Um, there, there's protocols in place. Like just this morning, just to travel with Ridley for her shoot up in Vancouver, they sent a nurse to test myself and Caden and Ridley because we're traveling in two days and we'll be tested as soon as we land. And then we have to quarantine and then we're tested again. So, but, but having said that, yes, the industry, uh, came back and was able to figure it out. So a lot of my friends, you know, my sister, um, Lloyd, um, we're able to continue to work. We just worked around it. Yeah, it took like a moment, and then they were like, "No, nope, okay, we've we figured it out." Um, yeah, it 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 has added a huge um, budget to to these productions. I mean, now just you know the COVID protocols are enormous, um, and in an, an enormous expenditure. But um, yeah, but well, you know, if, if the alternative is to not do it, to not do any of it, what are you going to do? Yeah. You know, exactly, exactly. So, and there are plenty of actors who have I've spoken with a couple of them who are like, you know what, I'm going to sit this out until it's said and done. 
I mean, oh, sure, I appreciate sure. and respect that situation. The question is, uh, when is it going to be done? You know? Oh, I know. Yeah, I know. When is it going to be done? I am now currently fully vaccinated. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. So. Got to do what you got to do. Got to do what you got to do. And uh, yeah, yeah. Do you have a little bit more time for some fan questions? Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Keith Homel wanted to know, when you have time to yourself, what what's your favorite thing to do? Oh, when I have time to myself. I uh, Whenever that may be. <laughs> <laughs> I love to sing. Yeah. I love to I love to dance. I love to plug myself into my music and and it's a it's I've got a very eclectic taste, so it depends on my mood. Um, but that certainly lifts me. I love to go for walks. I, I love um, I love being in nature. Um, yeah, when I when I get time to myself, I I'm I'm a more I think really a um, introvert than an extrovert in many ways. I um, I charge my battery by being alone. I charge my battery by yeah, just yeah. you know visiting, you know visiting the 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 poems or the stories that fill me and the music etc. And then yeah, going for walks. Mm -hmm. it's, there's something that a lot of people assume about a lot of us when, you know, we're on yeah. how, um, <laughs> oh, it must be effortless. It's draining, you know, and, you know, not not to say that it's not something that we love, but at a certain yeah. point, we have to retreat, you know, absolutely. and it's nothing personal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. And yeah. I and, and that's something that I, I very much need. I am. Yeah, I, I get, I, I get, yeah, I get depleted. <laughs> right. And also, and also, you know, I'm, I am, I'm one of those actors who, you know, I don't just step on, on set or, you know, even at a convention and step out on stage and just like, I love this. This is amazing. I, right. I'm actually, I do get nervous and I, I do worry about, oh, gosh, you know, I, I'm, I can be in my head a lot about this kind of stuff. And so I do need to take a moment to just be on my own and decompress. For mm -hmm. sure. Kicks 394. Was there anything uh, specific that you would like to have explored more uh, in the series or in the, the DVD films that hmm. never were? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess it, well, I'm going to give a kind of a generalized yeah. um, answer to that question. And, and, and that is to say that, I mean, yes, there's, there's a big yes, because... I feel like, you know, there was a lot more to be mined from Taylor mm -hmm. and, um, you know, where she came from and who she was and mm -hmm. um, and a, a lot more that I would have liked to have found out about her and different colors that I would have liked to have played. So I know that's kind of general. I'm not being specific, but the but the answer to the question is yes, for sure. Um, yeah, I, I would have I would have loved to explore, have explored different um different colors and layers and, and gotten to know uh, where she comes from and, you know, just a little bit more about her history, etc. cetera. Um, yeah. That's a fair a answer. <laughs> Eli wanted to know, uh, mm -hmm. wants to know uh, any, um, you had a lot of in interactions with fans over the years. You've, you've been really good about, about visiting us at, at events. Um, any uh, conversations with fans that, that really struck you, you know, struck a note with you that you that you carry with you about any specific uh, impact that the show has had on someone or, you know, yeah. I know I, 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 I don't know personally, but I know I know kids have been named after Taylor, you know, little things like that. You know, it's really like, wow, you know, that, wow. that character meant something to so many people. Yeah. Yeah. That it blows my mind. I mean, it, it, yeah, it blows my mind. I, you know, I, as I said, you know, I spend my days kind of Prompt, romping around as a mama, yeah. Um, but yes, stuff like that always blows my mind. And I and I have met of quite a few people who have said, "Yeah, we've we named our daughter after your character." And and then I've met a lot of people who have shared with me their stories of, you know, great adversity, whether it was you know overcoming a severe illness. Um, I'm getting choked up. Oh my goodness! Mm -hmm. But. Um, and how the show gave them hope. Yeah. Ooh, sorry. <laughs> um, gave them hope and um, allowed them into a world where they felt like you know they were they were a part of this team and 
and how hopeful that was. And and I've also, gosh, what's wrong with me? It's okay. It's good to be vulnerable. It's a, well, it's, <laughs> it's a show where everyone felt accepted. And we yes. need that. Yes. Now more than ever. It's okay. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I just... Yes. And then and then, you know, other stories of people who were like, you know, I didn't think that maybe that was something that I could do or I didn't think that I could be strong enough or brave enough. And and, uh, you know, that watching me somehow inspired them to do to to leap into something that has now changed their life for the better. So I've heard many, many stories like that. And and clearly (laughs) I'm I am. uh, I'm very humbled and moved by it. Yeah. As an artist, to be able to to interact with people and, and discover that, yeah. that through through the work, you've helped them discover a part of themselves. You know, how many of us get to do that? How many of us get to leave a legacy behind? Not just for our own families, you know, mm-hmm. because that's obviously a, a core piece of what it is to be human. Sure. But also yeah. to connect with, with people the world over. That's yeah. a gift. Oh, it's huge. It's huge. And, um, you know, I, I thank you for, for this interview because, you know, sometimes I need to be re- reminded of it. Like, it really is a gift. And um, I'm truly grateful for it. I'm very, very grateful for it. Yeah. You know, oftentimes, I mean, as performers, you know, you're you're in front of a lens and you've got your core team. But um you don't know how it's going to ripple across and, and affect people, and and the fact that you know we get to we get to hear those stories is really wonderful. Absolutely, mm-hmm. you got to do something um, that is, from my perspective, extremely special. Oh, well. <laughs> to to sit and work with Joel Goldsmith on Beyond the Night. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Joel was one of my favorite human beings, um, and you know, it's he uh, yeah. he is missed. I think about him constantly. The mm-hmm. work um, that you got to do in creating a song uh, yeah. had to. I mean, tell us about that experience. Um, it was phenomenal. It was phenomenal. I got to you know fly from Vancouver back to Los Angeles several times actually to to work with him and to um you know just kind of like hash out that particular song um you know and he was just so wonderful in in terms of you know wanting my input as a as an actor about that character and and really playing on the the the, the stories and the story arc of the Athosians, etc and he was such a delightful human being um, and a perfectionist. Uh-huh. And, 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 you know, we had talked about, the two of us, we had talked about working on an album together. We had talked about working on an album together and he was really, really excited about it. And um, he, uh, yeah, he, he, had, he wanted to do other things. And, and uh, I was excited about that as well. And we had a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, I, I got the opportunity to go out for dinner with him and his mm-hmm. crew and and so yes, a, a great loss. And I and I'm and I'm so grateful that I got to know him and, and had that experience with him. And boy, it would have been lovely to have continued to work mm-hmm. with him. You Absolutely. know, I think about what that might have been. It but would have been amazing. Um a very, very gifted man and a and a generous, generous soul. Who's, yeah. Whose idea was it for you to sing? Um, is it the it writer? Not, well, listen, I had come to I had come to them um, in the se- in the season before, and I'd say, uh-huh. "Hey, just so you guys know, <laughs> I sing, and I kind of like to sing, and it might be kind of interesting to explore, you know, music in the Athosian world. And if you wanted to do that, I could sing." <laughs> <laughs> I remember them saying, um, well, we don't really do pop or um, gospel or it was just like, come on, guys, <laughs> na, 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 na. we can figure this out. Like, yeah. you know, 
I come from a background of musical theater, mm -hmm. so I I loved the idea of, and I always have, I always loved the idea of like getting to know a character through music. So it was it was it was a germ of an idea that I planted, and then they they found a way to run with it, and happily I was able to work with Joel. Do your kids sing? Have you have you continued that in your family, or are they not oh, into I still, it? Uh, no, they are. Well, I mean, Caden not so much at the moment, but he used <laughs> to love. Thing. And every once in a while, while we're driving, I will start singing a song and then I'll hear him kind of like singing along and I won't be ah. like, you know, oh my God, it's just like, okay. Just let it happen. Let it go. <laughs> That's good. He's singing. This is good. Uh, he has a beautiful voice. He Aww. just, um, at the moment, you know, he's in his awkward kind of burgeoning teenage years. And so he's, he's figuring like, himself out. Totally, but he's got a great voice. And Ridley, however, my sweet little powerhouse of a beauty, uh, loves to sing. And, uh -huh. and, and listen, sometimes she's like, Mom, uh, you sound a little too classic, Mom. It's a, It goes like this, and then she'll do the rift. It's like, do the rift, Mom. And I'm not even going to try and show you guys what it is, but she's like, yeah, she's got a great little voice. She's a very good singer. She's a, yeah, and, and I can't. <laughs> if you're, cla you're classically, I, you're classically I'm musically trained, kid. right? Yeah, I'm classic. Yeah. I'm like, you know, legit. Um, <laughs> but, and, but she's like, oh, I had this horrible moment like two weeks ago. I was, I was singing. I was feeling emotional because that's part of how I express myself. I start to sing, and she was in the back seat of the car, and I thought she's loving this. I'm singing this musical theater song, and I'm sure she's just. And I turned around and I saw this. And I was like, Ugh. <laughs> I am failing as a human parent. Uh, I laughed. I laughed. She loves she loves the lullabies and I'll just oh, stick to that. God. You know, I can't <laughs> I listen to to the music that's on now every once in a while and I'm like, oh, it's not doing it for me. <laughs> right, every yeah. once in a while, some more acoustic, the more acoustic stuff is. Sure. You know I mean, it's like, sure. what is this oh. noise? You know? I know. I Give know. me John Denver or Bob Dylan, you know? The Eagles, <laughs> Fleetwood Mac. You're dating yourself, David. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> the music these kids listen to these days. I know, right? It's <laughs> <laughs> terrible. I mean, yeah, yeah. Some of it is, some of it is terrible michelle palmer what did you think about the relationship between taylor and michael were you able to connect with him in a way no one else could which made it more complicated you know i it, it especially after um the episode michael you know yeah can you imagine had that gone a different way where the yeah. two of them had connected because they do <laughs> in that episode they but i mean yeah. if she were able to turn him yeah. You know, kind of like, yeah. you know, Ray and Kylo Ren. You know, that oh. would have been fascinating. <laughs> it would have been fascinating. That relationship, one way or another, had depth. Absolutely. Absolutely. Gosh, I feel like, um, yeah, she answered her question in the question. But I just want to concur. Absolutely. That um, it was wonderful. First of all, it was, it was always wonderful performing with Connor. He brought so much to the character. And it was always a joy to... Um, you know, dissect and play with those with that relationship between the two of them, which was incredibly complex, mm. incredibly complex. I mean, there was, you know, guilt, uh, intrigue, um, you know, and certainly in the beginning, in the first uh, episode where he's introduced to, there was a lot of compassion and and understanding, um, which kind of carried through. Um, and yes, yeah, she was the only one who I think really had a um, insight to who he was. Um, and that was, that was very fun to portray. Yeah. yeah. As evil as he was, as backward mm -hmm. as he was, there is this, 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 um, this like ping of Eros that, that vibrates underneath all of the scenes, you know, yeah. it's like, yeah. you know, so she, by who she is may just be able to reach him by he, yeah. by who he is. And at a certain point, it's like, you know what? I'm going to kick you off this roof one way or the other. That doesn't yeah. mean that you can't be redeemed until... Yeah, she, he takes he takes the baby. Exactly. That's what does it, you know, because exactly. then exactly. he crosses a line, and it's like you know what you're 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 beyond you're beyond redemption. No. Did you agree with that choice, or was uh, there a part of you that was like, 
I just wish that we, I wish that I, that I grabbed him with, with Shepard and picked him up <sighs> as he was hanging off the side of that roof. No, I agree. That's with a big tr- deal. It's a big deal. It is a big deal, but you know, it's that, it's the mama bear thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agreed with the choice. I think at that point with everything that, you know, she had, there was just no, yeah, I, I certainly, I did agree with it. I did agree with it. You know, and it went hand in hand with where I was at that particular point in my life as a mom mm. of a young, young little one. And of course, you know, you'd do anything to keep them safe. Correct. Um, but yes, yeah, so I, I loved how that um, element played through, yeah, all of those, all of all the seasons. There was always that complicated, yeah, he the connection. I would yeah. argue it's one of the richest arcs in the show. Yeah. You know, that that, that connection. You. Carl Binder I, I, did a great job with Carl. Michael. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And Carl, oh, Carl, Carl, what a lovely man. Yeah. First of all, can we just, what a lovely man. Um, and yes, he did. He did a wonderful job with Michael. And certainly that's part of the reason why I was always so excited, you know, when Connor, yeah, came be to play because um, I got to dive into things that I wasn't necessarily um, afforded to do on a regular basis. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. One of my uh, favorite scenes in the show, and and clearly it is for uh, Peace Rider as well, wants to know um, the the race car sequence in uh, The Prodigal. Uh, Did you get to uh, race with the guys at all during break? And uh, how many, as an aside, how many uh, Torin actors were there? Oh, um, there were, I recall, ooh, I think there were just two. Two babies? Two, two babies. Um, and did I get to race? No, I did not get to race. <laughs> Come on. Do you think that they would have given me an opportunity? No, I, I did not get to race, um, but that was very fun. Um, I think with your enhanced reflexes, I think you would have clobbered whoever had the other car. <laughs> Probably. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, you was talk for a moment of like you know, hey, do you want to use Caden? But we couldn't use Caden because my my Caden was so blonde with blue eyes. So <laughs> would have been like that can't be her baby. <laughs> Jeez. Seriously, I platinum blonde with the bluest eyes. So. Well, maybe had um, her spouse been, but after yeah, that, right. it was like, well, this is not going to work. Yeah. So absolutely. Yeah, exactly. exactly. That is a relationship, you know, uh, that it was unacceptable that we didn't get to see more of. You know, yeah. we got we got one scene after his his untransformation, which basically mm-hmm. establishes that he's that he's. At least there's that, that, you know, at least that, you know, that he's back to his uh, normal self again, or at least something akin to normalcy, mm-hmm. that he's recovered his life. But, sure. you know, that was, it was just one of those things where it's like, give us more, you know, <laughs> there's, there's more here to this family and to this story, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's just another um, element that would have been great to have explored for sure. Jim Kite and Roz Vendeji. What was it like working with Christopher Hyredall? Oh, Chris is lovely. Chris is a delightful man and a, and a wonderful actor. Um, and um, Chris, when I first met Chris in our very first scene together, um, he, he gave me this wonderful gift. He said, you know, um, it's not because, of course, I was, you know, portraying the leader. Mm-hmm. And um, he said it's... It, the, you you don't you don't elevate the queen by the queen necessarily being powerful. It's just it's how others def- defer to the queen, and he did that so beautifully in his performance that really empowered Taylor. Um, and and that was a gift. That was a gift that he gave me. Um, and it was wonderful acting with with Chris. He's he's still a friend, you know. Every once in a while, I, I get to reach out to him and see how he's doing. Wonderful, wonderful he's actor. He's doing really well. Yeah, right. And uh, yeah, wonderful actor, gifted and generous performer for sure, and a lot of fun to work with. Yeah. And Jason, how was? Oh. <laughs> you know, talk about someone who has shot through the stars oh. and earned every accolade that he's that he's gotten. Yeah. You know, I yeah. mean. 
uh, a, a lot of people would would argue that that Game of Thrones was was his uh, was his big break, but I don't think he would have had that without Atlantis, you know. Mm-hmm. And maybe he would have, maybe. But I mean, that's the 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 relationship that you all. I remember him with his guitar and just being <laughs> chill. And you know, there was there was an energy that he brought to that set um, mm-hmm. that was oh, just yeah. all its own. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Jason is a, a unique individual. <laughs> That's the word for it. Uh, uh, and, a, and, a, and a lovely guy. You know, I'll always have a soft spot in my heart for Jason, for sure. Um, yeah, yeah. And it's and it's wonderful. It's wonderful to see his trajectory. Um, but yeah, I always very much enjoyed working with Jason. And, uh, you know, he's he's a heartfelt guy. Mm. Um all of his blusteriness and you know, <laughs> he can't help himself, but you know, he, he really, he did, you know, once you get him, he's a very heartfelt, wonderful human being. Mm-hmm. Kappa one, six, one, one. Um, how did it feel about losing rainbow? Oh, I took it hard. I can't yeah. imagine what you guys did. Cause you and rainbow yeah. and Polly were particularly tight. Yeah, we were, we were, we were, we were a, a motley crew, very silly. You know, we were that group. You know how, like, when you meet somebody and you're like, oh my God, you ya. got me. <laughs> and so we got into all kinds of mischief and couldn't stop laughing. We were just ridiculous. We were ridiculous. We were like this combo. Um, so it was, yeah, it was, it was really, really sad. It was, um, it was sad, sad news and we didn't want to lose him at all. And, and, um, you know, he was just such a lovely guy. In many ways, he was like, you know, my little brother. Mm-hmm. Um, and we didn't want to lose him. But the interesting know. result was that he he uh, got to do a lot of, you know, he got to, yeah. well, in his own words, he got to act in season two. Well, there you go. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, I suppose nothing happens without a reason. That's true. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think uh, I think that's pretty much that's pretty much what I've got for you here, Rachel. That the, the hey, we've awesome. got we've got two hundred people watching, and you know, <laughs> there's there's just a a, a continued uh, uh, desire for this content, and I'm really really mm-hmm. hopeful that we haven't seen the last of Taylor. You know, I hope that if if this this uh, SG four ever gets a green light, um, right? You know, right. I think Never. that the sky's the limit in terms of weaving past stories into the new one. Sure, sure. We shall see, right? We shall see. <laughs> Absolutely. And I hope to see you again very soon. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. And, and yes, you know, I am currently at the um, beck and call of yeah. Ridley's schedule. Right. So, but I am... Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> How long are you guys going to be uh, up in Canada? Uh, I think we're going to be there for about a month and a half. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, you know what? <laughs> this is this is a tremendous opportunity for her. You oh, know, yeah. for her yeah. savings account. You know, <laughs> for college. You know, this is uh, all of it. All this of it. Is fantastic. And it is. And yeah, I mean, you know, as a mama, it's so wonderful to see your little one in their joy and in their confidence. Mm-hmm. It's just like, oh my gosh. And uh, she certainly is when she's on set. She just adores it. So there's no telling where she could go. I, I might end up being like a, you know, a tiny little <laughs> addendum in her story, right. you know, because she's she's really amazing. You know, she's amazing. <laughs> well, uh, considering her mama and her daddy, I can't blame her. Uh-huh. So, um, I yeah, I will be in touch with you real soon. And you know, awesome. please, please stay safe and be safe. And oh, um, you know, like uh, like Catherine said to you, you know, before you started the the show, you know, yeah. soak every bit of it up. Yeah, you know? I will. This is a, this is a great journey. Well. It is. It is indeed. It's, yeah, it is indeed. <laughs> Thanks for your time, Rachel. It's my pleasure, David. It's always a pleasure talking to you, truly. Thank you. I'll be in touch with you real soon. I'll email you soon. Awesome. You awesome. Take care of yourself. I'll wrap up the show on this side. Good to okay, see you. Awesome. Good to see you too. Bye, Bye, David. Rachel Luttrell, everyone. Taylor Imagen on Stargate Atlantis. Thanks so much for tuning in. I have 
artwork that I wanted to share with y'all. This is an artist by the name of Sal Shat. I think she also goes by Sally. Um, but her, I mean, I think that this is charcoal, if I'm not mistaken, or pencil. I didn't ask what the medium was, but whatever it is, it is absolutely um, fantastic. I, I love this. Let me see if I can, if I can, um, there we go. Check this out. The fluidity, you can just tell that even though there's, it's an inanimate, you know, image, you can feel the movement. And this one. The way that she's captured Rachel, Rachel is just terrific. And also not just Rachel, but check this out. From Rising, just coming up from the depths underneath the, uh, underneath the ocean. And this may be my favorite. I would love to hang this on my wall. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> that is so cool. Absolutely cool. Thank you, Salshat, for for submitting these uh these these images to us. Um the fan community is just so freakishly talented and uh, never fails to to surprise me. Um questions for David. Teresa MC do you like to draw or any artwork? Enjoyed the art concepts. So, uh, I I grew up drawing. Drawing was my major thing, and it's just I I I went the writing direction instead. I stopped drawing around fourth fifth grade. It's something that I probably should regret, but I don't because I focused on you know other areas and it's like like some people are just naturally talented and can just produce anything. I, I truly believe that you can become technically proficient in something just by doing and doing and doing and you can actually you know achieve it like like Gary Jones says that he has, although I think that he has more raw talent than that. but then you look at something like his son did that that kid is just pure talent. Um, I'm referring to our episode with Gary Jones and in our interview. You go, you can go back and watch that in the uh, the Dial the Gate archive, where he shows us some of his and his son's artwork, and it's just amazing. Absolutely. Kicks three ninety four. When you first found yourself getting into Stargate fandom, did you ever picture yourself doing things like this? No, no, I definitely did not. I was fourteen years old, just a just a kid in my bedroom watching you know TV on Saturday night, expecting. Either the Outer Limits or Poltergeist: The Legacy to come on. It was it was a uh, double uh, two hours worth of sci-fi on Saturday nights. The the ABC local affiliate and one of them didn't come on and Stargate did instead. And uh, what an adventure it's it set me on meeting these lovely people. Tune Tamasha, a dog's breakfast sequel. Is it happening? Unfortunately, not right now. Uh, Kate Hewlett and I discussed, you know, a dog's bed and breakfast. David Hewlett on his last episode, we talked about, you know, a similar idea uh, to that. Um, but yeah, no, I I was lucky to be the uh, the first um, reviewer for a dog's breakfast and posted that on Gate World years ago. I've love, I absolutely love the film, and if you have not seen it, check it out. It. You, uh, it, it comes at you from a, a, a kind of three stooges direction, but man, is it funny. One of the things that, that I, that I, I tend to gauge humor with, uh, at least certainly def definitely when I was younger is, will my dad laugh at it? Because if my dad laughs at it, then it's funny. And my dad laughed through this whole movie <laughs> and he doesn't often do that. So yeah, absolutely to David Hewlett, um, you guys, you guys did terrific so 40 minute mark in the concept art video there is an audio sync issue with the video oh fantastic just great i was afraid of that um i'm sorry guys i hope it's you know i hope it was still salvageable the, with those pre-recorded episodes you never know what's going to happen so okay appreciate the note tracy i'll uh i'll keep that in mind for uh for the future jeremy heiner can we interview Connor Trenier by chance? So Connor, um, I have been messaging his agent. I have not heard back. Uh, I've, I've sent I've sent a few messages. I don't know if he's getting them. I don't know if it's something he's not interested in right now. I would love having Connor on. I've always loved Connor, and every time that we've gotten to to talk about Michael, the the man. Um, is is insightful and thought provoking about that character. If any of you have a have a line on him on Twitter or anywhere else, you know, um, if you want him on the show, let him know. 
You know, that's that's one of the ways that, you know, uh, we have I have gotten uh, talent on the fast uh, in the past to to take a second look at our show and agree to come on uh, when there is fan interest. If you want Connor, um, uh, reach out to Connor via tweet and send him a send him a brief message and hashtag dial the gate and we'll see if we can we can get his interest again, because I would love to sit down from beginning to end and go through the the Michael arc with him. He did a fantastic trick t- trip Tucker, but he did a really great Michael Kenmore. So that's what we have for this episode. If you liked what you saw, um, be sure to like it because it changes YouTube's algorithm and gets this in front of other Stargate fans. Otherwise, it won't. Um, or leave a comment. That also helps uh, as well. I'm always reading through the comments and checking them out. Um, and if you really like uh, what it is that we're doing, subscribe and uh, click the bell icon because you'll get uh, notifications of any last minute guest changes or uh, uh, any uh, upcoming episodes as they go live next week on the docket. If I can press the button, there it is. Joseph Malazzi will be joining us for part eight on May the 23rd to discuss season 10 of Stargate SG-1 at 12 p.m. Pacific time. And then, uh, let me see here. This also marked wrong. Let me double check this real quick. Darren, we need to update the website. 12 p.m. Pacific time is Joseph Malazzi. And then at 2 p.m. Pacific time on the 23rd, we have Pierre Bernard of Sergeant O'Brien fame from Stargate SG-1 and even more famous or infamous, depending on how you approach his, his takes, Pierre Bernard's Recliner of Rage from the Conan O'Brien show. So Pierre will be joining us next week. I am really excited about this episode, getting to nerd out with with another uh, Stargate fan. And he's who we've got coming. Uh, Later on this month, a very special episode between me and Darren. 12 Things We Want from SG4. That is going to be premiering on the 30th at noon and then at 2 p.m. on the 30th. I'm hoping to meet with Rob Cooper this week to get it recorded. Part four of his ongoing interview. I want to discuss the inner workings of building Stargate Atlantis with Brad. And so that is the intent. My profound thanks to my team who makes uh, every weekend happen. Summer, Tracy, Keith, Jeremy, Reese, Anthony, uh, Gate Gabber and uh, Jennifer Kirby. You guys are the best. You make the show happen. I couldn't do it without you. And uh, to all of you who tune in, uh, my regulars, I do know who you are, and I do appreciate that you do so. And to newly discovered um, audience members, welcome. Hope you enjoyed what you saw. Hope you can stick around for more. There's some big stuff coming. I'm looking forward to making some announcements soon. Thanks again to Rachel Luttrell for joining us. My name is David Reed for Dial the Gate. We'll see you on the other side.